I want to talk about Mitchell Trubisky for a second. Um, he's someone who I, I've always found him to be a very interesting player. I, I did feel like he got too much criticism in Chicago, but that doesn't mean I think he's necessarily great. And one thing that I found very fascinating was, I don't know if any quarterback's stock has risen uh, as much as Trubisky's have without playing a snap, because that's pretty much what happened. I mean, he had, okay, he technically had 10 snaps last year, but we essentially saw no play from Mitchell Trubisky in Buffalo last year, and now all of a sudden, he's getting a significant pay raise and potentially a chance to be a starter over in Pittsburgh. Why is this? So this is his contract details. The one at the top, that was his uh, Pittsburgh deal, so two years, 14.285 million, and then the year before, he got a one-year, $2.5 million deal. So he went from getting, you know, two and a half million to getting double that guaranteed, just in guaranteed money, literally, literally just his signing bonus was double that. And he's going to make at least seven million because he's going to play that first year. So uh, he's looking at potentially making 14 million. Uh, so we're talking nearly uh, th three times what he got in the previous uh, year, literally from doing essentially nothing, 10 snaps. On one hand, it's kind of the American dream, right? <laughs> doing nothing and still getting a pay raise. That's the goal. That's what we're all shooting for. So definitely respect the Trubisky. But why did this happen? And there's a couple things you could look at. But first, I want to go back and look at here. So this is his PFF grades uh, from his career. So Interestingly enough, his best season was actually his rookie season, which is certainly funny because that's not what most people would consider. Although I would say, you know, his second year, his running ability became a real threat and that helped out uh, this, the Bears a lot in their, you know, that was the year that they went to the postseason. But in the next couple of years, he really didn't improve at all. These are not great statistics. If you're a fan of PFF, this is something to be concerned about. Not everyone's a fan of PFF. I get it. But again, it's worth looking at for sure. Not great numbers. So he didn't really show a lot in four seasons with Chicago. He didn't. So the obvious question is like, why? Why is he getting this pay raise? What happened? And there's two main things I can think about. One is just the obvious one of it's, it's kind of simple economics of supply and demand, right? Last year, there was a lot of good quarterbacks that were coming out of the draft, five of them that went in the first round. So a lot of teams that were quarterback needy would, you know, like if the Steelers were last year, maybe they would say, yeah, let's just go and let's draft a Mac Jones or whoever ends up, you know, whoever we can end up getting. Whereas now the Steelers are kind of a little bit more desperate. So they just, you know, say, hey, uh, we want you here. And maybe there's a couple of teams who wanted Trubisky and are paying him more. I think that's part of it. I think a bigger part of it is the fact that the Bears offense was so abysmal at times last year. I think people now view Trubisky in a higher regard, which really isn't a great way to do that. I think if you're good at scouting, you should be able to tell if a quarterback is good or bad, regardless of the situation around them, especially at the NFL level. Really difficult to do that in college, but at the NFL level, it's a little bit easier, especially when you have four years of tape. And I would also say, like, I don't think it's really fair to say that like Matt Nagy is the only reason the Bears struggled for all those years and that this is just an awful situation every year Trubisky was there for. I just don't know if that's totally fair. So these are the situations around, you know, Trubisky or Fields in the past two years, talking about pass blocking and receiving, and this is where they ranked in pro football focus grades. Uh, so again, not everyone's a fan of PFF, I know, but if you are, uh, here it is. I think they're pretty good. Anyways, 2021, so with fields, pass blocking was 17th, so mediocre, but receiver was really bad. In 2020, pass blocking was worse. The receiving core was a little bit better. So again, neither one of these are great situations, but you could certainly make the argument that they're, uh, I guess, similar. And to me, I'd, I'd honestly rather, especially for someone like Justin Fields, I'd rather him have guys to throw to than have a little bit more time in the pocket. I think that helps his play style a little bit more. While a lot of the receivers were, you know, similar players, they kind of did, like, you know, Allen Robinson wasn't as good last year. So that kind of made the whole situation look worse and therefore makes Trubisky look better, even though I don't know if that's entirely fair. And, you know, going back and watching some Trubisky tape, like there were issues with his film. Going over to something like this, where I think this is a good example of kind of how I've always felt about Trubisky a little bit. There is stuff to like with him, but these are the plays that he just cannot make consistently. It's zone coverage. And you see this uh, route, which is going to, you know, get into a little bubble right there. I've circled it in white. That's where this can, you know, that's where this play is trying to go to. As you see, Trubisky is going to run this play action. You are going to see that right there, there can, can be a a window to make this throw. Now, it's going to be a little tough, 
right? I mean, you have to get it over a Green Bay player who's in front of them, but you also have to get it underneath Kevin King, who's playing defense right here. So it's not the easiest of throws, but these are the throws that you want like a good quarterback to be able to make. As you see, Trubisky is going to, you know, it hangs up there a little bit. I mean, it does. It doesn't exactly get there in a hurry, and it's probably a little bit high as well. This is a tough throw, and I'm not trying to bash Trubisky for not being able to make this throw. The reality of the situation is, I, you know, I mean, I'm not exactly coming here with a hot take about Trubisky being, like, you know, not the best player. Pittsburgh isn't expecting him to be a superstar, as I'm sure plenty of people in the comments have already written about. In fact, if we're being honest, I actually kind of like the move to go out and get Trubisky. I think he's a high quality backup. And when you're going to be probably getting a young quarterback, then I think that getting Mitchell Trubisky in the building, someone who's also been through the experience of, you know, being a high pick and also having it not go well, and maybe he can, you know, add some insight that way, and at least provide a baseline decent quarterback play, I think that's fine and totally worth overpaying for one, in my opinion, the Steelers are pretty far away from competing now anyways. I know they made the playoffs last year, but I think that, you know, I, I think I just think they're in a tough spot uh, currently worth where their roster is at. So I think that, you know, getting Trubisky and then drafting a quarterback, in fact, this may be something I would have even done myself. So why am I making this video bashing Trubisky? I mean, hasn't the guy gotten bashed enough? My point is more so... I think that there is a subsection of people who are like, Trubisky, he could turn it around. It was all just the, the only issues he had were being in Chicago, getting him in a better situation that will make things better. And it might. In fact, I think that it probably will to some degree, but it doesn't seem like it's a realistic uh, thing to hope for that in year six, Trubisky is really going to end up thriving with Pittsburgh just because he's in a different situation. And if that's your hope as a Steelers fan, I would maybe uh, pull back expectations a little bit. And if the Steelers are expecting Trubisky to be a starter, I would pull back expectations a lot because I don't think that this guy is going to be a top 20 starter. I think that he's an interesting guy to take a flyer on. There is a little bit of high upside, but I don't know if how much high upside. I think that, you know, he might be able to get a little bit better. I don't think he's ever going to be elite. I don't. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. Again, I know it's not a hot take. Oh, you, Trubisky, maybe not a superstar. We all get it. No one is sitting here saying Trubisky is going to be a superstar. Nobody is putting this as anything other than a flyer. But I kind of want to make a video really explaining why I feel that way and why I think that it, you know, why it is just a flyer and not something to be taken too seriously. So hope that made sense. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.